I'm going to touch on this a bit more uh, just now again. But uh, the manual that you have in your hand <clears throat> is exceptionally important. Thank you for bringing your 10 rand. I didn't see you bring it, but I'm sure you did. <laughs> These manuals cost us almost 8,000 rand, by the way. So uh, um, if you can pay half, it would be helpful. Uh, uh, so just bring 10 bucks, and we would, we would be very, very appreciative of that. But these uh, manuals are very important to the... Babe, where's the piece of paper that I had in here that you just... I think you didn't... No, you didn't take it out. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I don't need it. Um, I think... No, I needed it. She said, I didn't want to do this. All right, so... With your pens today, of course, you're going to fill out... On page four of the, of the, of the field manual, you're going to fill out your notes there <clears throat> on page four. Dion, you got your pen ready? No, Dion? Uh, Dion, <laughs> must I do everything for you? If you don't have a pen, the pen you're supposed to get, because for your connection card that you filled out, you weren't supposed to put the pen back in there, or you're supposed to bring your pen with you. <clears throat> bring a pen or use a pen. Who doesn't have a pen yet? Who's got a manual and no pen? Because that's just not going to work for us. Oh, uh, look at that. Did you hand your pens back in? Ah. We should have announced, don't hand your pen back in if you don't have a pen with you. I want to encourage you, I spoke to someone earlier, they said they, they don't fill out connection cards. I want to encourage you, fill them out. And this is no slight for anyone. If you don't want to, of course, you don't have to. But my, you know, do you know our prayers are powerful things? <clears throat> so I feel like I'm losing my voice already, too much shouting at the sound guys. <clears throat> my uh, pray <laughs> prayers are a powerful thing. Amen? Amen? Do you know the first prayer ever spoken? Do you know who it was by? Bet you don't know this. I'm going to seem very clever now. Grant, you wouldn't even know this. No, maybe you do. The Bible says that God is light. In the book of Revelation, it says that uh, we will, in, the, in the new heaven, new earth, that we'll need no more sun because God is light and He will be the sun. He will be our light God, because he will be there. And that's quite a profound thought. Amen? Yeah, just, just throw them, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose everybody else. I'm going to wait for Ryan to hand out the pens. Uh, babe, can I have my water there, please, uh, if you don't mind? We love, we love having one meeting on a Sunday morning because you don't have to rush everything. But statistically, if you look at the numbers over a period of a month, a month and a half, we have about 50 to 60 people less at a combined meeting, ordinarily between the two meetings. Interesting. So if we have 350 on a Sunday morning between two meetings, on a combined meeting we have 280 <clears throat> because people just stay at home. But I don't know why. Maybe there's, uh, there's, no, there's no seating. So please help us think, how are we going to process, how are we going to win this thing? Because I don't like rushing, but the more people in the building, the more people get saved. Who's with me? Amen. So there's the goal. There's the, there's the Lord, how do, we, how do we do this? So please pray with us. So we talk about prayers here. The first prayer, God is light. Amen. And so God has light on the inside of him, but guess what? He wants it on the outside of him. So what does he do? He prays. What did he say? Light be. Words came out of God's mouth. Now, of course, not praying to himself because he's so full of faith because that's faith. He so believes what he's about to say is going to happen that he goes, light be. And the light on the inside of him just manifests on the outside of him. That's the first prayer ever prayed. You and I carry the glory and the power and the revelation and faith of God inside of us. How do we get on the outside? We speak it out. You're writing a prayer. It's just as powerful as you speaking it. I can promise you now. When you write in the connection with a person's name you want prayed for, your wife, your husband, your daughter, your son, your, your unsaved friend, or whatever issue you have in your life, people speak that out with faith, knowing that, the, and the Lord knows that that's what you want, and those prayers get answered. Friends, how do we get our prayers answered? We've got to speak them out in faith. What's on the inside has to come out. Amen. Of course, now God can read your thoughts. We know all that stuff. But by the most, for the most part, we speak our prayers out. Who's with me? Amen. Amen. So, I don't know why I said that. It's a side note. You fill it out with your pen. Whose head doesn't have a pen? 
Dawn, you got a, oh, my hand went up. Okay, we all got pens, wonderful. And then on page five, you see page five? It says the four internal tanks, fuel series week one. That week one, friends, is week one of a six-week small group that's running. Each person standing up here and every life group at Grace Life is doing the six-week course. This 50% of the power of this series is found in those life groups. Amen. If you miss the life group, you miss 50% of this. Because this you follow on through here and you write little notes in here. It's got places for you to write stuff in here. So I want to encourage you, the people that you stood up, that stood up this morning, the guys that are over there, outside will be the tables afterwards. Sign up with them. Spend six weeks in there. Go through this. I promise after six weeks you won't leave. You'll stay there till the end. The six-week group is 50% of the power of this series. You really, really need to be in that group. Amen? And there's no law saying you have to be, but I want to encourage you. It's a work of faith on your part. You need that group to help go through. Because what happens is there's a videos that Steve, that Steve Wimble does who did this course, and there's videos on YouTube that we play during times. It's about 15, 20 minutes. We watch the video, and then from there we begin to unpack and we speak this. It will actually write this out as he's talking. Amen? And then on page 16, starting tomorrow, will be 36 devotionals per day. I want to encourage you, find a space, find a time during the day, and, and, and go through this part of this course, amen, part of this series. You really need to do that. If you want 100% of what this series offers you, that's very important. Number one, coming on Sunday, writing out your notes. Number two, six weeks of the, of the fuel series in the small groups, the life groups. You want to be part of that. Of course, there's space here with these guys outside afterwards. Please sign up. And number three, you really want to do the devotionals starting tomorrow morning with your manual. Who's with me? Yes. And that's why we decided that it's Ryan's idea. Great idea, Ryan. Not many of them, but you had a good one. Ryan's full of good ideas. Why? Because he's got the Holy Spirit living in him. And he said, why don't we give manuals to everyone that comes through the doors, not just the life group guys? And we all said, amen. 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 All righty. Okay, so week one, and today is called Life to the Full. I get the privilege of starting it, and uh, we're going to have a great time today. So, have you ever run out of petrol? Who's run out of petrol? You know, I'll be honest with you, since coming back to Jesus in 1999, I don't think I've run out of petrol. Have I? But before that, when I used to smoke a lot of that stuff, I ran out of petrol often. But Dawn and I have, there's a couple of times I've sent you a picture. We've got an eco sport, and then it counts down, you're like 20 k's, 100 k's, 20 and down, and it says DT, distance to empty. And once or twice I've taken a photograph, it says zero. <laughs> so thank God, I haven't run out of petrol, but my tank says there's nothing in you. But, uh, um, you know, I don't know about you, but a number of times in my life I've run out of fuel. And when you run out of fuel, what happens? That thing just comes to a grinding halt. No matter where you are, on the freeway, in your driveway, outside the shop, <clears throat> the, the car just comes to an end. And uh, um, so the, the goal is not to run out of fuel. Amen? And really, uh, uh, what we want to do in this series, that's why it's called Refuel, is, Refuel, is look at that analogy and why the Lord wants us to be in the top third of the tank. Some people don't like to go below zero in their tanks. Think, that's great. Some people always take chances to quarter. They wait for the beep, beep, beep. Yeah. And... Uh, um, Fairly often, dawn now, we have that 57 or 50, 60 k's in our car, and it starts, it makes a noise, beep, beep, beep. You know, and you're like, shh, be gone, Satan, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and if you've seen your car filled with fuel by praying for it, please come and pray for our car. <laughs> Once every two weeks or so, we would appreciate that. I'm just kidding, eh? We don't pray for each other's cars. Do not call me, please, and Craig, you're the pastor, come bless my car. I ain't doing that. You pray for your own car if you want. All right, Luke 10. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. 
and love your neighbor as yourself. They asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And what did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We know Paul says, after Jesus passed away, Paul says, you know what Paul says? The greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself, actually. But before the cross, Jesus is speaking here, and he says he's obviously speaking through the law. And they say, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. So he doesn't just go, love the Lord your God with everything you got. He uses four things here. With all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. With all four of those things, you love God with everything you have. We know that was the first commandment. Clearly, we all know now in the new covenant, it's impossible to love God with everything you have. Every day, 24, 7, 365. That's why we need Jesus. Amen. But we know that God's called us into a relationship with him, a love relationship with him. So four specific things here, heart, soul, mind, and strength. In our series, we're going to look at spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical well-being. And interestingly, I don't know about you, but I grew up, I grew up in a household uh, where my mom and my dad got divorced when I was very young, maybe four or five years old, my, and, and they got remarried. My mom remarried a man <clears throat> who was about five, seven, built like an outside toilet. He was short, stocky, he wrestled uh, at school. He had a thick neck. He was a solid, solid Afrikaans guy. He played first team rugby and standard eight. You try and think about that one. Uh, um, very, 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 very physical guy. I played rugby for the police force when I was growing up. I remember my mom washing all, the, all the, the jerseys, or the police club, rather. He wasn't a policeman. And, uh, um, but very physical, but not much emotion. So, you know, big men don't cry and all that stuff, you know. Oh, when you're crying, when you're crying, and you're getting a hiding, he's hitting you with a belt, me and my brother in the bathroom, wah, wah, and the bum, and you're crying. He's like, what are you crying for? So, well, let's just stop it. Think for a second. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you why I'm crying. You make me bonus here. Yeah. Well, actually, everything. Yeah. In the 80s. But, so, so, but that was my stepdad. My father, my biological dad, he was not so physical per se, you know, into sports and that, but he was a lot more emotional. So I saw him growing up, I saw him crying at times and, you know, just, just, they, they, I just, so I saw my dad in that, in that realm, but I kind of lived and grew up mostly with my stepfather. So, so, you know, I can tend to lean towards more, just less emotion. Not, uh, Craig's very in his emotion. Sometimes I don't, I can, I can just, even something that should be bothering me, I can just go, I'm not going to let it bother me. Maybe good or bad. But, uh, um, you know, Dawn's teaching me that actually sometimes that's not so helpful. She's saying, no, babe, that's not good. But, you know, Jesus himself, if you think of him as a, as a, uh, as a man, you look at his life on this earth, he was you know, quite in touch with his emotions. So in, in John 11, Jesus wept, didn't cry, <laughs> he wept. Now, which man here in this building has wept, like wept? Not a couple of tears here and there. Because it's quite, I don't hear any of that soaking music, guys. I, I think there's something missing, and I just want to have it for this morning. So, so Jesus wept. He began to be sorrowful, troubled, Matthew 26, full of joy. Luke 10. So you know there was emotions in Jesus that he, was, that he wasn't shy to just let out. For most men, I'd say even in this room, if I, if, I, if I can put it out there, we tend to not show that emotion too much. Because, you know, we males and we South African and we like, you know, this, we tough and we rough. And, amen. And so there's something in that that can be helpful when it's needed, but sometimes when it's, when it's needed not to be emotional... But sometimes when it's, we need, it needs to be emotional, it's not helpful when it's not there. Who's with me? Is someone in the building this morning? Amen. Yes. Thank you, Grant. The mind. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind. Why the mind? Because the mind is, a, is an instrument that God gives us to think with. 
and to process thoughts with. So when it comes to loving God, I have to love God with how I think. So I want to find out about his character. So Jesus, Jesus as a young boy, is sitting in the, um, uh, with the, with the, you see, sitting with, the, um, with all the teachers. He's sitting in the temple, the temple courts. And he's busy backwards and forwards with the teachers of the law and the scribes. And his parents arrive, and they're like, Jesus, kid, is sharp. At a young age, Jesus understood and knew the Father. Who's with me? So God wants us in the same way. Matthew, Romans 12, 2. Grow in the way we think. Renew your minds. Renew your minds. Keep your mind engaged when it comes to God. Who's with me? Amen. In physical aspects, Jesus was hungry. He was thirsty. He got tired. He slept. He understood how to deal with things in his life in a healthy way. For, for most of us, we struggle with dealing with things in life in a healthy way. Who's with me? Amen. We will, we will go too far on one side or too far on the other side, and we struggle to be consistent in keeping healthy in how we live because we don't... We, yeah, we don't, sometimes don't see the importance of it. But I can tell you now, as a matter of fact, uh, um, Steve Wimble, who did this, so obviously all these series that we get from Hill, beautiful, and they're wonderful. We've gone through many of them. This one specifically has a very, very personal touch for Steve Wimble because we've heard his, his, his preach. We've heard his story. Steve has got up and preached it. I've heard it twice, where he went through some, some major, major um, issues in his body where he didn't know, did not know, he had a problem with, oh, geez, now suddenly, it was not, not lupus, but something similar to do with his, his nervous system. And for, for literally for a year and a half, he went down a dark, dark, dark rabbit hole with some major issues in his, in, in his physiological body. And it took him a number of years, two years with some psychology and split sitting, talking to counselors, not only in his church, but people that he paid. He went to go see doctors and how God brought him out through this, this, this entire process a number of years, but um, almost to a point where he wanted to give up ministry. Like he's literally, I want to die here. Yeah? I don't want to live anymore. And I, I, he couldn't be in the ministry. He couldn't preach. He couldn't teach. He couldn't be in the ministry. He was on eldership. He could not be in the ministry. Things have gotten so bad for him. At times, laying on the bed, crying, like just completely messed up. And now God brought him out of this. And he began to see these different things, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, and what they meant, and the different tanks. We'll get onto that just now. But what that meant, and how God wanted him to live in a place that was healthy. But for many of us, we don't live in a place that's healthy. Physically, we overeat things. We eat the wrong thing. Amen? God wants us to be free. He wants you to have that chocolate. Sugar's not your enemy. Just large amounts of it is. Amen? Coffee's not your enemy. Just large amounts of it is. Food, <laughs> you need it. But just large amounts of it at the inappropriate times is not healthy. As a matter of fact, alcohol, nothing wrong with alcohol. Nothing wrong with the whiskey on the rocks if you're into that. I haven't had one for years, but nothing wrong with that if you're into that. Have a nice bottle of whiskey at home and have... Maybe a whiskey or two at night if you feel it, if you want that. Or a glass of wine or even a beer. But the thing is, is overindulging. Alcohol is a poison. Amen? It literally poisons you. People die, have died from it. And so there's a regulation that God wants us to have and everything. Entertainment is fun. Netflix is great. Even being on leave for that last month. Netflix is great, but I don't want to sit every day just binge watch Netflix after Netflix and just waste the day. Amen? So everything is good. Paul says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Interesting. Amen? If you're under 18, block your ears. If you're married, matter of fact, you can be, sex is fun. It's pleasurable. You know, Craig, you're going to talk about that in the church. Well, listen, let me tell you something. You would be sitting here right now if your mom and dad didn't have some pleasure at some time in their life. <laughs> pleasure is fun. Pleasure is great. But, but you can get addicted to a whole lot of different stuff. Amen? Yeah. Me, just something else. You do something else. We've got to just, we got to regulate. Amen? Yeah. See, Jesus didn't steward his body 
and steward his emotions and steward his thoughts and steward his mind well for selfish reasons. He did it for the mission and the glory of Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. I spoke on Tuesday night at the refuel time. And I said, this community called the Bluff needs a bunch of champions that believes in Jesus and believes in prayer and believes in, in revelation and loves God and is willing to lay their lives down. In the book of Revelation, it says they overcame the blood of the, they overcame, they overcame in this life by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives unto death, meaning they were willing to lay their lives down to death for the glory of God. Some people can't lay the Tuesday night down for refuel. Amen? Amen. I don't say to make you feel bad. I say, let's live for the mission. Jesus didn't do this stuff for his own self. He did it for the mission. We do this for the mission. Amen? We come into church on a Sunday morning for what? Because we want to, as a collective called Grace Life Church, if God has called you to make this your home, if he hasn't, that's fine. But if he's called me, we do this as a collective to do what? To impact this community called the Bluff and beyond. Amen. I love that. I want to encourage you. Next Saturday, let's all pitch up there. Why? Because we want to impact the Bluff with the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord loves this community. Why are we here? As I was saying on Tuesday, if we're just going to do church for church's sake, let's shut all this down and just go and sit on the beach every Sunday. What's the point? The point is we want to do this for the glory of God to impact this community with the love of Jesus. Are we perfect, as I said before? No. Are we dysfunctional? Yes, we are. And if you think we're functional, you're the dis in the function. Amen? Every church is dysfunctional. Every family is dysfunctional. But we live for the glory of God to make things as best we can, to unify as best we can, to move forward for the mission of God, to see this community impacted with the love and the glory of Jesus. So these tanks, having these tanks full or close to be self-regulated keeps me healthy for the glory of God and for longevity in the kingdom. Amen. You're very quiet this morning. And uh, it's not helpful for the preacher when the people are quiet. I need you, Grant. I need you to, you're going to have to talk for 200 and something people here. Are you just listening well? I get it. Okay. See, when, when, when we are living life to the full, so Jesus says, uh, the enemy or Satan comes to rob, kill, and destroy. To rob, kill, and destroy. Who wants to be robbed, killed, and destroy? No one in this, in this hall this morning, for sure. But he says, but he's come to give us life and life to the fullest. So which means, I want to give you life, Craig, that you enjoy life. So that people see you, as I said uh, last Sunday, we're not a bunch of sucking lemon. Can I say sour pusses? Is that a bad word? Craig, Jesus called me to lay my life down for him. <laughs> I think Jesus was the most joyous guy ever. But he was quite specific in what he wanted. He knew where he wanted to go. Amen. But full of joy. Yeah. Full of happiness. But of course, leading and leading well. He wasn't afraid, as I said a few weeks ago, or when it was, last weekend. He wasn't afraid to direct. He sends out the 72. What does he tell them? Just get out there and do whatever I told you. He says, no, don't take this, take that. Don't go here, go there. Don't talk to this person, talk to that person. Don't carry a weapon. He's very specific about what he wanted the 72 to do. They didn't go like, hey, listen, Jesus, you've told us to go out, now just let us be. Because there was a reason why he was giving them that for strategy's sake, amen? But full of joy, full of, full of happiness. I want to tell you, at times I've got into the flesh. Maybe at times I haven't been joyful as I should have. Hey, there's some dysfunction in me. But bear with me as I grow in Christ. Amen? Just as I bear with you as you grow in Christ. Who's with me? I promise you can join another church and go find the pastor there. He's also ain't perfect. The only perfect one in this room is Dawn. Okay, and her parents... The only perfect one in this room, friends, is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen? So three big things, and we finished. The three big points are a promise from Jesus, an invitation from him, and response from you and I. One thing I, I, I want to 
say from the outset here, friends, is that we have to understand that this is not, I fill in the manual and I come and listen and I'm just going to grow because it's like university. We got to know that the first point of call, as a matter of fact, that's big point number one. I'm going to just go straight there. John 10.10, 10, as I read earlier, the thief comes to still kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. The only way, well, the only promise, put it this one, the only one who can promise us that is Jesus, which flows into my point number two. But we've got to understand the gospel, we have to be centered around the gospel of Jesus, not stuck in old covenant, old covenant law. I read somewhere the other day, it was somewhere in America, they said there's a whole lot of laws and this and this and this that you have to, they said that we, that we have to, if we learn to live, obey the Ten Commandments, the Ten Laws of God, and I'm going, no, you, you are so far off the mark here. No one can obey the Ten Commandments. Nobody. Not one person in this room can obey the Ten Commandments. Paul tells us, or James tells us, if you fail in one point, in one law, you fail in them all. Who's with me? The very first one, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Who does that 24-7, 365? Hands in the air. Not one. So that means if you don't do that 24-7, 365, you've already failed on them all. <laughs> Amen. And every lawbreaker deserves punishment and death. So that's why Jesus came to the cross, so that he would fulfill the law and shout, it is finished, tetelestai. And the word tetelestai was a Greek word, and Jesus spoke Aramaic, but a Greek word that what happened is the tetelestai meant the, the, judge, the, the amount that's been owed has been paid. I've satisfied the debt. What was the debt? We owed God because we broke the law. Amen. So I'm found now in Christ, which means that's why there's no condemnation for those because Jesus, Satan comes, what's he called? The accuser. And what does he do? He accuses you and I day and night of breaking the law of God. Not loving enough, not, not obeying enough, not being joyful enough, not being moderate enough, not holding everything in tension enough, not praying enough, not coming to church enough. Not preaching enough, not evangelizing. He's going to constantly do that and say, you are this and that. And he accuses the brethren day and night. But when I understand that I'm found in Christ and the law now has been fulfilled, I now walk by the grace of God. What does that mean? I walk by the law of love. So now I outwork love because love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen? But when I fall short of that love, and I don't love as much as I should, the Father says, Son, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. I still love you. Amen? I've got you, boy. You're in my hand. We're going to do this. You're going from glory to glory, Craig. My favor surrounds you, boy. You see, I need those words. That's the gospel. Because if I come to you and I keep telling you how useless you are, you're never going to get up. But if I keep telling you, you can do it. You can do it. See, what does the Lord do? The Lord just condemns you and tells you you're a filthy, useless sinner, and there's nothing you can do about it. Grace says, yeah, I dropped the ball, but don't worry, I've got you. I'll help you overcome. Heed my words. Listen, son, let's walk this life out together. Amen? The Lord doesn't offer up a finger to help you. So we understand the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. What's the gospel? That Jesus first died for me, he went into the grave and he came out and rose for my power so that I in him can walk this life out be full of joy amen, amen. and full of grace and love myself amen. for others who's with me amen. all right so it's very important that I wanted to spend some time there because the gospel is the power of God not just how much I can keep my tanks full but this is exceptionally important because if I do this if I don't do this I'm going to fall short. I'm going to bomb out who's with me I need my mind to be engaged in this so that I know actually I need to stay healthy. I need to be doing certain things and not doing certain things. And not using grace as something I can just fall back and because God will lift me up. Son, I love you, but I'm not gonna I can't drag you out the gutter if you don't want to come, son. Amen. So the four tanks, let's just look at those quickly. Physical energy, I'm gonna explain just now 
and, and, and number three, what those are. But physical energy, emotional energy, spiritual energy, and me mental energy. See, most of us, or a lot of us, live on the, in the bottom three. Maybe the bottom two. Some of us, physical energy, we're in, we in number one. Someone wrote one time, I need to exercise to have energy, but I need energy to exercise. It seems like a Ponzi scheme to me. <laughs> Amen? Physical energy, emotional energy, spiritual energy, and mental energy. And of course, in your, in your manual, <clears throat> there's a place to write there in the mornings, and you can write how... Uh, um, how you feel you're doing for the next day before, where, is, where am I physically, where am I emotionally, where am I spiritually, and where am I mentally? So I can keep gauging throughout these 36 days or six weeks, and I can ask God to help me stabilize that. So living in the top two of each one, I believe that what's happening is we're beginning to live life to the full. Amen? As I said, we don't want to be legalistic here. We want to follow the model of Jesus. He understood the gospel, number one. But number two, he was very adept in keeping regular. And he rested at times. At times he pulled away. At times he prayed the whole night. There was this, he had the ability to keep himself in that top band. Now, you know, but Craig, Jesus has been going three years. I'm 66 years old. It's okay. We'll keep walking with him and he'll show us how. Amen. I believe that when we hit the bottom two or bottom three and we keep staying down the bottom, it's flesh at best, demonic at worst. Either I'm just getting into the flesh in different areas of my life or it's demonic and I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, it's, the, well, you get that. Flesh at best, demonic at worst. Very important that we understand that. But nothing we can't overcome because of Jesus. Amen. I want to encourage you, friends, keep speaking life over yourself. I woke up this morning at 3 o'clock and I had a lot of stuff in my mind, a lot of things going through my head. And I was starting to fall back to, back to sleep. So I woke Dawn up and said, Babe, speak to me. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. But she's got a cat sleeping right on top of her. How does that? I, I couldn't imagine that. Like, I'd be like, get off me. She's curled up. Yeah. And she'll turn on Donald move and she'll like, like, how does that even work? But I was like, babe. No. And then I just go, I go, if my mind starts to wander in a place that's unhealthy, I'll just start going, you know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. His plans for me are perfect. Have I, have I always been perfect in what I've done in everything in my own life, my marriage, in, my, in the church? No, I haven't. Have I been perfect in every relationship? No, I haven't. But Lord, I thank you that you have already forgiven me in Christ 2,000 years ago. I thank you, Lord, that whatever mistakes I make are not going to shape me I'm going to shake them off, amen, and I'm going to keep walking forward. Paul the Apostle, have you got another 10 minutes in you? I'm just kidding, another half now. Paul the Apostle comes onto an island, and as he comes to the island, he, something and a snake grabs hold of him, and all the islanders go, this guy's cursed. Check, he got bitten by a deadly snake. And what does he do? He shakes that snake off. What do they say after it? He must be a god. Let me tell you, people, people, they things attached to us friends because something is something's hold of us and we can carry some kind of stigma to that even in our own minds we shake that off we change the perception of ourselves and others about what we have the ability to do amen, amen? and it's interesting they were very open to the gospel after that i suddenly realized geez how's that when we're constantly bound up by stuff and broken by things we're constantly full of disappointment and 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 uh, uh, rejection and and bitterness and anger and frustration and an offense. It, it's unhelpful for us in the long run when we're trying to bring people to Jesus. Amen? I want to tell you now, there's bitterness and offense, and we've got to be careful we don't pick those things up, even second-hand offense. You know, who's heard the term take offense? You have to take offense from someone. Don't do that on the one hand. But I want to tell you on the other hand, if you feel like you've been betrayed, so you betrayed and so you picked up an offense or you're bitter. You've been betrayed by someone maybe that you love or someone that you didn't expect to betray you or treated you like you didn't think you should be treated. Number one, forgive them. On the cross, Jesus said what? Jeez, God, let me have my revenge and clap these oaks. No, 
He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Oh, but he should know better. But he doesn't, otherwise he wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Be like Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing, number one. And be found in Christ. Your identity is not wrapped up in the way that person thinks about you. Your identity is found in Jesus. Now, it's not, excuse me, eh, I'm in Jesus. It's like, it's like, I forgive you. I love you. I'm not going to hold that against you because I'm in Christ, and he's a, I'm a son. And my identity is wrapped up in him not in the betrayal. People have been betrayed in the church and they've fallen by the wayside because they've carried that betrayal for years and years and years. Dawn and I were betrayed by many people we felt when we left our previous church. But you know what? We didn't hold it against them. And we kept on preaching on the love of God. And when we saw them at spa, we'd smile and how's it, how's it? And they were like, kind of like, oh, geez, like, don't talk to that couple. And we just continued and continued to love. And I believe God's honored that over the years. Amen? Where some of them even now are our friends again, 16 years later. And even if some aren't our friends now, and they still hold us, to, um, I don't, I'll, I'll, don't worry. When we get to heaven one day, I'll invite you to my house. We can have... <laughs> heavenly whiskey. <laughs> we don't believe the lie of the enemy, friends. Eve didn't sin. Because she was a sinner. She was a saint. She was a child of God. We don't sin because we're sinners. We are saints. She sinned because she believed the lie of Satan. You won't die, will you? Ah, you won't die. Come on. Okay, I won't die. She believed the lie. We don't sin because we're sinners. We are saints of the Most High, sons of God. There's no sin in heaven, and you and I are seated in heavenly places. But we sin and drop the ball because we believe the lie of the enemy. Amen? I'm getting way off my mark, off my thing here, but we don't have too much further to go. Four or five pages we've done. Number two, quickly. Number one, promise to life to the full. Jesus promises us. He promises. Lord, I wake up in the middle of the night. Lord, you've promised me life to the full. You've promised me life to the full, God. Number two, invitation. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who's weary and burdened here this morning? We're almost finished, friends. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen to that. Come to me, all you are burdened and weary. You see, Jesus doesn't say, you know, when I was younger, my, my late opa, uh, uh, when I was a young and he lived with us, he would grab me by my sideburns if I did something wrong, us, and he'd, he'd lift you up. Did you ever have that done to you? No. I've got no sideburns now. But. And you're like, oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> me and my brother, my, my stepbrother, both of us. Oh, you have like some, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> This is a strange thing if I think about it now. I'm going to ask him one day when I see him. Hey, give me your sideburns now. No. <laughs> Why was I saying that? <laughs> See, God doesn't lift you by your side and say, come now, come with me to get rest. He says, come to me. We have to come to him. If, you, if you're this morning seeking rest and you've come to grace, I've well done, you've come to him. It's a one step closer. I need rest. Jesus, okay, come. He's not going to force you to do anything ever. He's a gentleman. Amen. He's the spirit of grace. He won't force you because it's got to take faith. Come to me. Then he says, take my yoke. Take my yoke. So come to me. So there's, a, there's an action on my part. And he says, take my yoke. He doesn't take, come here with sideburns and takes a yoke. And, and that yoke that Jesus speaks about is a, is a, is a, was a, he's speaking, it's a yoke. Like the oxen yoke. It's something that goes now. And the oxen, that yoke would rub and it'd be like, they'd try to make it as comfortable as they can, but that was heavy and it carried some weight. There's some weight that God calls us to carry as believers. Amen. But I promise you now, it's easy and it's light. I'm carrying this for Jesus. Oh, I'm sacrificing for him. Our sacrifice should be, should be the same as my revelation of who he is. If I understand who God is, it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb, the word of the testimony, and they didn't love their lives to death. If I understand who Jesus is, I won't love my life to death. Forget about putting a yoke on me. Amen. Because I love him and I want to advance his mission. Only got one life on this planet. He won't force you. That word, 
Now take my yoke upon you and learn from me. No, 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 no. That's number three. Number four. Number, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Let me just jump straight to number three. All right. Invitation. So we have to come. Jesus calls us. He says, come to me. Come to me. I will give you rest. Come, Craig. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Please don't. Uh, um, someone came this morning and they asked me for something. And I want to tell them that there's going to be a yoke that God will put on you if you want that. But it'll be an easy yoke and it'll be a, it'll be a light yoke if you do it in Christ. Amen? If you believe and know who you are, you keep walking that out. God will direct you and open that door for you. But you know there's, there's, that, there's going to come that because that's how the kingdom works. But it's easy and it's like there's no fear attached to that. Amen? And number three, your response, willing to change. We're almost done. It's my last point. Take my yoke and, and upon you and learn from me. That word learn, the Greek, is the word montano, which means instruction and to form a habit from there. So what happens is Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, which means there's, there's times I'm going to have to learn from him and take that instruction and make it a habit. Who's with me? Amen. It's got to form something in my life. Now, there's no law about how fast that forming must be. But I used to say this back in the day when I first came back to the Lord. What took someone 10 years, Lord, I wanted to take me one year. What took someone one year, let it take me one month, God. What took someone one month, let it take me one week. Amen. Let me not go around and around the mountain because I just go, no, 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 I'm just going to. And sometimes for me, it was like, if the leader says I can do it, I'm going to do it. Yes. I'm going to ask him question. Well, hold on. Uh, don't know. Let me first pray about it a thousand times. It's like, bro, I want it. Why? Because I want to learn quickly. I want to go around and around the mountain. Amen. Hebrews 6, by now you ought to be teachers, but someone has to teach you all over again. Because those people have not formed a habit of the very things that they're supposed to be teaching, that they're outworking it. Amen? So, of course, over the next six weeks, I want to encourage you, as we go through these manuals, take what the manual says, learn from it, say, Lord, help me put this stuff into practice, not because I want to be your son, because I am your son. Amen? I want to be able to be what you've called me to be in every facet of my life. And so if I look at those things, physical energy, how tired am I? Uh, um, how rested am I? How well, how well did I eat? How hydrated am I? Am I having too much carb, carbohydrates, too much sugar? Nothing wrong with carbs, but the thing is, if you're having too much of them, it can make you sluggish and tired. So you've got to just monitor, hey, Lord, help me, help me regulate these things in my life so that I can be what you've called me to be. Not because I'm going to con be condemned if I don't, but because you've loved me and you want me to overcome. Amen? The emotional energy, how am I feeling? Happy, sad. Troubled, stressed, mental. What are the quality of my thoughts? Am I being creative? Am I too negative? Am I always frustrated? Am I feeling sharp in my mind? And spiritual, how close am I feeling to the Father? I want to tell you, friends, and, and, we, and we're done there. Why don't we stand together? I want, to, I want to encourage you. Closest to the Father, you're one thought away from being close to Jesus. But the problem is we have to make that a thought every day. We have to go every day, I am a son of the Most High God. I am full of the, the love of Jesus and I have the blood of Christ flowing through my veins. I can't get closer to the Lord than I am right now. Amen? Six weeks, we're going to have fun. This is essentially an introduction. I want to encourage you. The life of you is going to be outside. You want to sign up. You want to sign up to a life group to get the most out of this series so that we can grow in those things, our spiritual, our emotional, our mental, and our physical, that we can, we can become what God's called us to become. We can be fueled so that we can impact this mission and take this community for Jesus. Amen? There are many churches in the bluff, and we honor all of them, and we want God to bless every one of them. But this is grace life God's called us. This is our metron. This is our sphere. Lord, what do we do as your people here? Amen. Can I pray for you? Yes. Father, I just thank you for every man and woman under the sound of my voice this morning, even on, uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the video there, Father, in their lounges or wherever they may be at work, Father, I pray that you would open our eyes, number one, to the revelation of who you are, that you are Jesus, the Son of God, who gave his life for us. 
that you opened a way by your blood, God, that we could come to you to find rest for our souls. I thank you, Father, that we can do what you've called us to do. This, this room is a room full of champions. Lord, help us walk in peace with one another and unity. Be real and authentic, but know that we love by you and that we are sons of God, that we are champions together. Lord, this community cannot believe that they are champions unless they have a leader who is a champion or leaders. And we cannot be those leaders, Lord, if we don't believe that we are that. Help us, Lord, to see ourselves as you see us, as champion sons. Let us be Gideons in the wine press. Now, Andrew comes and says, come, you mighty man of God. Who, me? Yeah, you. Father, every man and woman this morning, mighty man and mighty woman of God, to do what you've called us to do. And let us start this morning, Lord, as we begin to refuel the tanks to impact this community. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.